Grace, a PhD student and Husher's mentee, and Professor Nasiri, one of his associates, gladly agreed to give us a hand with the search. They used to stay up late working in Husher's office, so that seemed like a good place to start. We had no idea how serious the situation was. If we'd known about his family, those poor children. I hope we can at least find out what exactly he was after and where he went. There are some papers on his desk that haven't been touched since he left. We have a good chance of finding something there. Lately, I feel like something odd has gotten into Professor Husher. I mean, apart from his usual oddities. He seemed anxious about something and looked like he hadn't slept properly in days. No offense, Mr. Nora, but it looks like it's the same for you. Don't worry, none taken. I'm well aware. This is his desk. As you can see, there are a bunch of documents he uses as research for his novels. It's all here. We better take a look at his computer and the shelves, too. The sooner we get started, the sooner we'll find something out. Look at this here. There are some notes where he mentions the music box, but I can't quite understand what he means. AA-375 is underlined. AA, uh, that's how the documents in the Donations and Biographies Archive are designated. Maybe he was looking for something there. Biographies. Let's start with the Archive, then. Where is it? Donations and Biographies are on the basement level. I'm sure it will be closed, but we can easily find the janitor or a key. It's not a very busy area. Keep searching. I'll go take a look. Should I start? Mm -hmm. This note. Is this a fucking joke or what?
I'm ready for whatever it is I have to be ready for.
Let's see. Hmm. It's a book about Argos Le Grant. A biography, or a collection of articles about him, I think. He apparently spent part of his life traveling the world in search of odd, rare events. Rich people stuff. I don't know. The biography suddenly ends right after his last journey. It says here, he returned without his equipment, without the huge amount of money he wasted on the project, and with a simple memento of the music he brought home to his little girls, eight-year-old Elaine and newborn Ariadne. And here's a note from Hasha that says, see the archives, events newspaper. Is there a newspaper archive over here? Searching. I'll go take a look. to find out what newspaper Husha was looking for. Hmm, looks like that sensor spotted me. There's something on that table. No. 
Please. Is anyone there? Hey, are you okay? No, 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 no. I can't get out. My flashlight is out of batteries. I need batteries. Trust me, I get it. I'll do whatever I can to help. Sir, is this yours? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I thought I lost it forever. Hey, I found your batteries. Oh, thanks. It's so dark in here. So dark. Just wait and see. It's going to turn out great. Right. Well, that's destroyed. Takes me back to secondary school.
There's something here. A note from a certain Sylvia that says, Professor Husha, remember to pick up your typewriter and the rest of your belongings from the library desk. This is the university library. If you need your own space, you can use your office. If Husha left documents in there, it may be worth taking a peek, too. Let me see. God, did you read that? Argos Legrand, heir to the Legrand family and owner of the LGA Incorporated business conglomerate, has died under mysterious circumstances along with his wife and eight-year-old daughter. It occurred last night at the family's holiday home, where they were spending part of the spring after the famous magnate's most recent trip. While police remain open-minded in their official statements and maintain that all lines of inquiry remain open, popular theories suggest that the family fell victim to a violent robbery, leaving the younger daughter, Ariadne, the sole survivor. She is currently safe in police custody. Oh my god, they're all dead. This is a dead end. Husha left some documents at the library. Maybe there's something there. It's all that's left to check. Searching. I'll go take a look. So, I just have to find the desk Husha used. Seems easy enough. There it is. I'm almost there. This could be useful. What? Oh, fuck shit. Another book about Argos Legrand in the library. 
A compilation of research trips written by two of his associates in the early 1900s. Sinister Nature was a kind of narration of Legrand's frustrated trips in search of paranormal phenomena, with one of the last pages marked by Husha, the cursed counts at St. Cecilia's Abbey. St. Cecilia, the patron saint of music. I'm not sure what Husha wanted when he set out in Legrand's footsteps, or how long he planned on doing it, but it was a start. The best place to start looking, before it gets too late. Isaac, my dear friend. You don't know what you've done with that cursed music box. By the time you tried to warn me, we had all heard the music. Now I find myself trapped in a tragic race against time. I had a hunch. I thought that perhaps by returning the box to you... Damn it, I've been such a fool. I lied, Isaac. I'm sorry. I just need you to hold on while I find a way to make things right. I left the house without telling Catherine. How could I possibly explain something like this? I thought she'd never believe me, and I was wrong. But now it's too late. I only hope you're all safe, and that you will find a way to forgive me. I must put an end to this once and for all. For my family, for you, and for my own sake. Argos Legrant. Everything revolves around that name. He was the person who had the box crafted and picked out the melody. I know he died in 1913. Newspapers of the day reported a violent burglary in his home. Everyone died, save for Ariadne, who was just a baby at the time. The case was closed, but something just doesn't add up. The police investigation was far too short-lived and the bodies were not buried, but incinerated. I believe, I believe they were trying to hide the truth. I discovered that the book Natura Tenebrosa was written by two of Legrand's collaborators, the same two who followed him across Europe, researching all matter of ridiculous legends, all equally far-fetched. The last case in the book speaks of Legrand's last journey on which he embarked just before making the music box. I've followed in his footsteps for weeks now, visiting every place, following every lead about that melody. Alas, I have reached the last leg of this journey, in the north. I find myself among the deserted ruins of St. Cecilia's Abbey, now covered in snow. Here, in 1912, the annual concert in honor of the patron saint of music was held. Legrand was not there at the time, but he came to investigate soon after. Every single person who attended that concert died or disappeared in mysterious circumstances, and the abbey has been abandoned ever since. The connection is clear. I know there must be something here, a clue I can pursue. If not, I don't dare think about the future. I can barely distinguish what's real from what's not. Something is watching me, following me, drawing closer and closer by the day. The melody still haunts me. Its notes echo constantly in my head. With each passing minute, they sound more ghastly and foreign. I see darkness all around me, and shadows lurking in the corners. I see my world merging with something else. I see another place. The black figure. I feel it's... It's here with me.
Time to move. I have to find it. This it's nice and warm.
if this works. Let's see how much I have left. Thank you.